Calvary family. We're so glad you're here with us. Happy Monday. God is good. And let's just worship him. Let's just celebrate him right now. Let's just thank him for all that he's done, for all that he's going to do, and all that he's doing right now. So I just encourage you, wherever you are, let's just worship God, for he is good.
God, for being with us. Jesus, we just choose to honor you and love you and worship you right now, here in this moment, Lord. We declare your goodness wherever we're at. We thank you that your presence meets us. What a beautiful thing to serve a risen Savior who is with us. Lord, it never gets old saying thank you to you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for being with us, God. We choose to worship you. And Lord, I pray that, um, that in this moment, Lord, our ears would be open as we prepare our hearts and our minds for the word that's about to be delivered. In Jesus' mighty name that we pray, amen. Well, good evening, Calvary family. Thanks again for joining us on uh, Monday night. Here we are, June 1st. Did you, <laughs> did you ever think we'd get to June 1st and still be in our stay-at-home order? My goodness, I did not think that. I'm so glad that you're here with us tonight. Uh, and I wanted to follow up from yesterday's message on Pentecost uh, with what I think is a very important uh, connection that we need to make. Um, because, you know, the reality is that the on, on Pentecost Sunday that we celebrate um, the birth of the church and when the Holy Spirit was released uh, for us to have power and authority and uh, for us to be able to function in God's uh, authority. I, I think it's an important thing for us to keep in mind in this season that we're in and just even in our daily lives when we come out of this time, which uh, I'm praying is going to be soon. Uh, I personally, I don't know where you're at. I'm rejecting the idea of, that everyone keeps on saying new normal. Um, I'm not saying that necessarily everything's going to go back to the way everything was before, but I'm, I'm kicked that, that term new normal. Uh, I'm done with it. And if I never hear the phrase uh, social distance distancing again uh, as long as I live I'll be okay with that right I don't I don't want to hear that anymore but here here's where we're at um the Holy Spirit was released on the day of Pentecost and it was the promised gift that that Jesus gave us that and he told us and keep in mind some of the other devotions we've talked about that Jesus said um that we're going to do even greater things that we're going to do, uh, you know, see signs, wonders, and miracles, even beyond what he did. Um, and he, he did amazing things. He raised people from the dead, uh, healed the blind, healed the sick, uh, cast out demons. Uh, but I don't think most of us walk in that power and authority. I don't know. Have you ever have you ever prayed for somebody and seen them healed? It's a life-changing experience. I've, I've been blessed on multiple occasions to be used by God to pray and see people healed. Uh, but I've also uh, had occasion uh, one time in my life, we, I prayed for somebody that was clearly demon-possessed, and uh, we prayed Jesus into them, and uh, they, were, they were mute. They had never spoken in their life. They were about 22, 23 years old. This was when I was in Jamaica. And um, after we prayed with him, he was able to say, Jesus loves me and I love Jesus. Uh, and it was, a, it was a miraculous and dynamic moment uh, that I'll never forget. I mean, it happened, I was 13 years old. I mean, that's, that's a long time ago, a long time ago that that happened. But it's a life transforming moment when you recognize this one truth. We're in a battle in this world. And it's not a physical battle. That's why the power of the Holy Spirit is so very important for each and every one of us. Because the power of the Holy Spirit is what equips us and prepares us to fight the actual enemy that we are faced with. And so this week, um, I thought we would go through Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. And I want to just read, and verse 10 is where we're going to start. Uh, it says, Finally, be strong in the Lord in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Tonight, that's what I want to talk about. The rest of the week, we're going to talk about the uh, armor of God. And the role that the armor of God plays in our daily life in spiritual battles and how we need to continue to be equipped with it. But look at what it says. We, we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. One of the biggest mistakes that we as Christians can sometimes make is to think that what we see in front of us is all that's going on. There is a spiritual warfare that happens around us regularly. Remember when Paul said that he, he desired to go to another country but he was prevented. 
Remember when uh, there's, there's verses talking about angels warring in the heavenlies. And, and these are all reminders that we need to grab a hold of and hang on to and understand that there is a broader spiritual world around us that we don't recognize. And, and, and the danger when we don't see it is that we, we can become self-reliant for how we walk through this world. And I really think self-reliance is one of the biggest uh, sins that we as Christians can have. Because what self-reliance says is that I don't need God, I can take care of myself. But what, what the Bible tells us here is finally be strong in the Lord. Don't be strong in your own talents, don't be strong in your own abilities, don't be strong in your giftings, which all come from God. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so you can take a stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. You know, we overcome... The spiritual opposition that faces us each and every day by relying on God's strength, power, and authority. That's why Pentecost is so very important in our daily lives. And that's why we need to be filled to overflowing with the Holy Spirit every single day. Because the Bible tells us that the devil is seeking to devour you. He's, he's marching around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. The fact is that in a daily, in, a, in the course of your day, we have to continue to evaluate. Is this a physical attack? Is this a spiritual attack? Is this my bad decision? Now, I'm, I'm not one of the super spiritual, hyper spiritual guys that says everything is an attack of the devil. But I'm also not so practical or so um, anti-spiritual that I say nothing is an attack of the devil. There are moments when the, the devil has singled you out as ripe for attack. And the way that you resist, the way that you come over that, the way that you protect yourself, is by relying on the power and presence of God. And we all have moments where we feel overwhelmed, where we feel as though we can't do it on our own. And the fact is, we can't. But when we feel like we're going to fail, when we feel like we're going to falter and uh, not be able to complete the task, the question that we have to ask ourselves, am I relying on my own strength or am I relying on God's? I got to tell you, last week was uh, emotional for me, really. Um, 12 weeks of preaching to a camera, uh, plus the, day, the daily devotions, which I love doing. Um, I enjoy them, all the interactions. Um, but for somebody that is a people person like me, uh, this is this is like slowly dying, okay? Uh, I hate it. I despise not being able to see your face, right? And I'm so thankful for each and every one of you that comes um, on, the face, on, the, on the Facebook, on Facebook in different social media v venues that have had a chance to talk on the phone or we've, we've connected online. I'm so thankful for those moments. But the reality is uh, I'm your pastor and I still had some moments where I felt overwhelmed. And I felt as though I didn't know if I could keep on doing what we've been doing. Because it, it's, it's not the work. It's the, the emotional and spiritual toll that it can take. And that's really most uh, how most of us get impacted, right? It's not the physical labor of things. Most of us know our physical limitations. But where we often fall short is our emotional and spiritual limitations. And when we start to feel overwhelmed, we, we have to be willing to pause and say, have I put on the full armor of God? Am I trying to address a spiritual issue with physical tools? It's my, I mean, we should all be eating right and exercising. Uh, we should all be doing those things. And I'm sure many of us kind of knocked it off during the pandemic. Um, but a good diet and exercise will help your emotional state, but if it's a spiritual attack, it's not going to take it away, right? And so that's where we have to be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. We have to be sensitive and willing to recognize that the Holy Spirit is there for our protection, our guidance, and our strength. And when it says to be strong in the Lord so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes, recognize that the devil is a constant schemer. There's, there's no good in him. He is nothing but evil. And he wants to do everything he can to trip you up and make you fail. And the, the, the quicker that we recognize what it says 
in, uh, in, in verse, the, the print's too small, I'm sorry. In verse 12, it says, Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. The quicker that we recognize that we are in a spiritual battle, the better equipped and prepared that we will be in order to meet it head on. Because once we've accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior, we have enrolled ourselves in that old song that we used to sing in, in children's church and Sunday school. Uh, I'm in the Lord's army. I may not you know, march with the infantry. I might not ride with the cavalry. I might not shoot the artillery. I might not fly over the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. And I know you wanted me to do the motions, but I, you can do them at home. Um, the sooner we recognize that and realize it, the sooner we position ourselves to be ready to confront and overcome those things that are put in front of our place, that are put in front of our path, put in front of our ways. We, we don't want to rely on ourselves so much that we think everything is just physical. Because really... Your physical body isn't really what the devil's after. The physical body is not what he wants to destroy. He wants to, destroy, he wants to destroy your spirit. And so seek first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness will be added unto you. When we recognize that we are in a spiritual battle, we are better prepared to confront it and to overcome it. And so don't be so self-reliant. Let the Holy Spirit guide you and lead you and put on the armor of God. That's what we're going to talk about the rest of this week is the parts of the armor of God and how they help us in our battle against the devil. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much. We thank you that we don't have to approach this fight alone. You're with us each and every day. You're with us every step and every moment. Your Holy Spirit guides us and leads us. And we will overcome by your strength and your power. And so I pray as we recognize the spiritual forces arrayed against us, I pray that you would keep us strong, keep us dependent upon you, and let us trust you in all our ways. We thank you, Jesus, in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Hey, God bless you. Thanks for joining us here tonight. We'll see you tomorrow night as we talk more about the armor of God.